Hey friends, my name is Alicia Greathouse with the Masterpiece Society. And at the beginning of this year, my daughter Olivia began creating monthly creativity prompts. So it's already May and we thought it might be helpful if we took a creativity prompt every now and then and show you our version of it. You can take the different creativity prompts and make them your own. They're basically just to give you a starting point to create art in some sort of fashion. So for May, the very first creativity prompt has to do with May Day, but Olivia thought it would be fun to create a woodland critter with a flower crown. So these are some paintings that I did years ago. They're on canvas, eight by 10 canvases, and I did them with acrylic paints. And I did the fox, the raccoon, a bunny, a deer, an owl, and a cute little teddy bear. Well, I guess it wouldn't be cute if I saw it in real life, but I've never seen a real life bear wearing a flower crown. What about you? Anyway, I thought I would use these as inspiration to create the May 1st creativity prompt. And I was going to do the cute little fox, but we have something quite special coming up next month that I wanted to plant a seed in your mind about. And so I thought that we would do a rabbit because in June, we are doing our second annual summer art camp, art venture into Wonderland. And of course, there's a white rabbit and a crazy March hare. So I thought it would be fun to do a bunny with a floral crown. So we're not gonna use acrylics though. I'm gonna use just watercolors. So whatever you have on hand, you can use that as well. I'm gonna clear these off the table and show you what I'm gonna use. So choose something small. Uh, this is a 140 pound watercolor pad. It's the Visual Journal by Strathmore and it has a hard cover. I use this to just play around with um, practicing. Isn't that gorgeous? But this is watercolor or if you don't have a watercolor pad, a mixed media pad would do. This one is even 138 pounds. So they're basically as thick as the, uh, the same thickness is what I'm trying to say. So um, I think that I will use the smaller one. That way it's less intimidating. If you have a big, um, like a nine by 12 watercolor pad, then maybe cut it in half and give a child or a teenager just half a sheet. And that way it helps when you're limited in size. You don't feel like you have to do so much. So let me find, a, well, that one's got paint on it. Let me find a blank piece of paper that doesn't have paint on it. And I'm going to use, as I mentioned, watercolors. Now I use the tube paints, but just whatever you have. If you have the cake kind, which I do not love, you can use those. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Basically, this is the cheapest version of watercolors you can use. I don't love them because they don't have a lot of pigment in them. So if you can just go up a little bit to like the Crayola or the Prang Semi-Moist. These are actually um, semi-moist. They're already in the tray and the watercolors come a little bit moist and you add water to them and then the paint works very well. This one is Art Philosophy and then this one is Windsor Newton. These are actually professional ones so I don't recommend them but they are the only ones I have in my room because my daughter Olivia took the Crayola ones. But I will tell you that I love the Crayola watercolors almost as much as some of these professional ones because the colors are really bright. So Crayola semi-moist, if that's all you have, they're probably three to five dollars at Target or Walmart. Then you're gonna want 
a couple of brushes that are reserved just for watercolor. And for watercolors, I like the round brushes. And I do have a preference, the silver black velvet are my favorites. These again are professional paint brushes as well as the Princeton Neptune. This is a good version, but I encourage you to invest in high quality paint brushes for your kids, even if you're using the Crayola semi-moist paints because brushes make a world of difference. So I will put links to these. You may not want these. I'll try to find some less expensive ones, but I'll put the link to these in the description and some of the different watercolors that I recommend. Also, I'm going to use a mechanical pencil and I have my handy dandy little kneaded eraser, which I prefer over these because I always smear with these. And then sometimes when you're erasing, just regular pencils produce crumbs. You might sweep your finger over it and then smear it. So these are my favorite. They, you can make them big. You can knead them down into tiny little points so that you can just erase in tiny areas. So I love these. I'll put a link to that. If you don't already have one, make sure you grab one. And I'm either going to use both a Sharpie and a Pigma Graphic number one, but probably just the graphic. If you don't have one of these, then use, um, this is the fine point, but I would recommend an extra fine Sharpie because we want thinner lines. I haven't decided. I might use this at least for the bunnies. Um, eyes, but we'll see as I go. So first of all, I'm going to pull you in a little bit tighter because we're going to just sketch out a bunny. I'm not going to do an entire rabbit because we have done so many lessons with rabbits at the Masterpiece Society. We created the Young Hair in Charcoal by Albrecht Durer. So we have that lesson. We have the Easter Cottontail Bunny where we have it from behind and just the cottontail is really adorable. And then our Playful Pets Portraits course has two separate bunnies that we use charcoal and gesso with and they are so much fun. So if you want like a complete tutorial then grab one of those lessons. Otherwise, just follow along. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make a fun rabbit with a floral crown. So I'm going to maybe start not quite in the center of my paper, but maybe two thirds of the way down. And I'm just doing a simple line that curves downward for the top of the head. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to do this a little bit light, and then I'm gonna come back and actually erase as much of my pencil markings as I can, but I want to help you see how to sketch this out. So we've got the little curve at the top, and then we're going to come in and create two little areas. Actually, I wanna make this bigger. I don't want to make my bunny so small that you can't see it. Let's see, let's do, they're kind of like parentheses. So then the curve of the head would be right there. And then just a tiny set of parentheses. Hope you can see it. And that's where we're gonna put the eyes. And then right under that, we're gonna do longer parentheses and this will be the chubby little face for the bunny and these are not perfectly symmetrical um, it would be difficult for me if I even had it in my lap normally I draw with it very close to me but I'm having to do this awkward angle for you to see it and so it's going to be near impossible for this one to be perfect and please don't expect yours to be perfect either just have fun with this process all right so now I'm going to just curve each of these parentheses curves up and under and have them touch. This is the edge of the bunny's cheeks. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of lines right here to just remind me to give it some sort of chest because we don't want it to look like a floating head. We're going to come back up here and create 
our fun little bunny ears. You, you can have yours go straight up. You can have them go out at an angle. You can have one flopping over and one sticking up. However you want to create your bunny, just leave room for the crown. So I just use my pencil to kind of even it out. You see how that's a thicker line right there? I'll come back and erase that as we go. All right, and I think that I actually want to bring in these top lines a bit more. There we go. So for the eyes, we want to come right around where the two separate size parentheses meet. And we're going to draw kind of wonky teardrop shapes with the bottom of the teardrop being on the outer side and the top of the teardrop being on the inner side. I'm going to turn this real quick so I can try to see it better and make sure that I get it as symmetrical as possible, but I don't promise that. I just promise to have something that looks like a rabbit <laughs> and give it a flower crown for May Day. If you make art where everything has to be perfect, then it's no fun. It should be relaxing and it should bring joy to you. I actually think that I might want these to point downward a bit more. So I'm going to adjust that a bit. Now these are darker than any part I've drawn so far, but the eyeballs are going to be important. And so now I'm just drawing, kind of rounding that out, but we want to get this inner corner. Make sure we still have that part. And then before we forget, let's just put a little circle in the top corner of each eye. Right now it looks like it's looking crazy and it's kind of cockeyed, but these are gonna be the light. So we're gonna leave those white, which will make the irises look like they're looking at us. And let's go ahead and just remind ourselves that we want to have an inner part of the ear Then we're going to come down just a bit and we're going to do another curve. To me, this is like a baseball diamond. I'm an Atlanta Braves fan because I'm from Georgia. So I'm going to draw me a baseball diamond. Yours can be a seashell. I don't care. Whatever you want to call it. Just draw it. And that's the nose. And we're going to draw a line underneath and then tiny bit of a mouth by splitting the lines underneath the nose. Kind of an upside down Y or V. And then that, from how I drew that, it makes this little chin look a little wonky. So you can make your adjustments as you see fit. All right, so that is a basic bunny head. And like I said, I've got these little lines here to remind me that there is more of a bunny. We're just using our artistic license and gonna pretend that the whole body's there, but we're concentrating on our flower crown. So what I'm gonna do is take my kneaded eraser and erase what I just drew, not completely. I wanna be able to see where my lines are, but we don't want all this showing up under our paint. And once you put your watercolors down, there's no erasing your pencil line. I think I will, let me just, those are, they're symmetrical enough. 
So I'm going to leave my eyes because I probably will color those in with my pen first before I add the brown or black of their irises. All right, so what I like to do, let me move this aside and just show you my watercolors. Normally, I would spray my tray with water just so that the colors can be activating. And so that's what I've done. Because we're concentrating mostly on our flower crown, I've already drawn the shape of the bunny, but now I'm going to start by grabbing, this is a number eight, sort of a medium size of a brush, and we're going to paint the flowers. Because we want those to dry and we don't want them running into our other colors. So, Let me show you how. I'm just going to do roses. That's my favorite flower, roses and daffodils. Let me pull you in and I'll show you how I create roses. Technically, let me grab this paper towel and just pull that up because I feel like that had way too much water on it. I prefer to have more paint and less water on my brush, it makes the colors brighter, and then the watercolors are gonna run, but the less water you have on your brush, the easier it is to control it. Not that you can really control watercolors, but you can try. So I make a C shape, and then I take another C shape in the opposite direction. Let me pull you in just a wee bit more. There we go. And then I come out and do another one. So these are not going to be professionally watercolored roses. These are fun, abstract roses. But if you see here, I started making it a little bit wider. So now I'm going to do another C shape here. You can connect it if you want to. and it starts looking like roses. So I think I will stick with the same colors. Just doing C shapes around in a spiral or circular pattern. And I'm going to do maybe five roses. I'm going to make it kind of in a an arch or an arc so that it looks like the flowers are encircling our bunny head. And that one will just be a tiny small one. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'll do seven because we'll see. Maybe this fifth one will be big enough. All right, I'll pull you back out so I don't forget. And you can see our little bunny has a cute little crown. I will take my dryer and dry these so that we can add leaves and begin working on the bunny's fur. Okay, they're not completely dry, but that's okay. I'm gonna be very careful if my pink and my green mix It'll make a lovely brown, so I'm going to try not to let them mix, but it's not a big deal if they do. Pull you back in just a bit so you can see how I make my leaves. I'm going to use, like I said, I use the round brush, so I'm just going to start from the outward tip and pull back towards my roses. 
and I'm going to make my leaves go in different directions. Have some thicker than others. If you notice, I never color in all of my roses or my leaves. I leave a little bit of white so that it looks like maybe highlights from the sun or whatever. And I did that one completely backwards from what I told you. Y'all know if you've watched my lessons on the Masterpiece Society, y'all know it's hard for me to talk and paint at the same time. All right, I am looking at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that I want to add two more. I want another one that kind of maybe is touching this one, but comes out to the side. I like the look of it kind of hanging down. And so I might do the exact same thing on this side. Well, that was beautiful. It's all running together, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to pull you back out. And I am going to clean this brush. I'm going to switch over to my favorite fat brush. It's a number 12. I like it because I can put a lot of watercolor on at the same time. And what I'm going to do for my rabbit is I'm just going to do this one that I painted before. It's kind of this yellowy color, maybe a yellow ochre. And so that's what I'm going to do with watercolors. We will not do all this attention to fur. That would be difficult. We're just wanting to keep these creativity prompts short and sweet. All I'm going to do is come in and where I have my lines that I mostly erased. I can still see them. And in fact, I may not even go by what I drew what I drew. I can adjust it as I paint and then after the watercolor dries, erase any lines that are still showing. And I just turn my paper or canvas, whatever I'm working on, I just turn it as I work to help me get a better angle with my brush. So that's a lot. It's kind of wet and I'm not letting it touch these roses or I'm trying not to let it. It may later on, but no big deal. But I do at least attempt to keep them from touching while they're all still wet. Oh, let me tell you this. If it's helpful to you when you're using a journal or something like this, grab you a bulldog clip and just clip down the side because when you add watercolor to your paper, that water starts to make the paper bow up a little bit and it gets a little wonky. It wrinkles up depending on how much water you use. All right, this one, I'm actually not going to go with the exact bunny ear that I sketched. That's why I sketch lightly. So that bunny ear was out to here, but I'm thinking I want it to be more upright. All right, I'm gonna let those dry a bit. We'll come back in just a bit to play around with it a bit more, but I'm gonna come down here and just start adding some brush work on the top of the bunny's forehead. You see how I'm trying not to touch my roses. Come right up to them. 
All right, so I'm making my brush strokes just a wee bit rough right down here at the bottom because we want it to have a little bit of fur look to it. You can do that on the sides as well. Try to remember that there is fur in this area. I'm trying not to get it on my roses, but we do want to, you know, we don't want a bald bunny rabbit up here, so. Fill in as much as possible. And then, I'm just going to take my brush and just make some vertical strokes, kind of curve them. And that will give us an illusion of the chest of the bunny. You can go as far down as you want. But again, I only did just a little bit on our little woodland critters because I didn't want to do their entire bodies. I am trying to even it up, however. All right, that's good enough. Maybe. I will stop. So these are drying. I think I want to just add a little bit more yellow right in here. I may just leave it. And then I want the tiniest hint of pink in its ears, but that's still wet, so we're going to leave that until the end. And let's get some brown. I think I'm gonna go back to my number eight. Make sure your fur is good and dry. And then let's go ahead and continue the brown in the eyes. Now just remember not to paint your little circle so that the highlights will show. That makes the eye come alive. All right, we're gonna let those eyes dry a bit. And this is still wet right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the slightest bit of pink on my brush. And paint in the inner part of the ear. We're gonna let all of this dry and then we'll come back in and add a little bit of pen work. All right, our bunny rabbit is mostly dry and I had thought I was going to use the Pigma Graphic One, but I think I'm just gonna use this Micron 2. This one is, let me show you the difference. I love the thick one for a lot of work, but since this is kind of a delicate looking little bunny, I thought I'd use this tiny, tiny point. I can't even get the camera to focus on it, but hopefully you can tell that this one is smaller. So um, now I don't know which lid went on what, but I guess they're the same. So because some of it is still wet, I'm going to do my utmost to not draw in it. I would suggest that you let yours dry very like make sure it's very dry before. In fact, now that I'm using this one, I'm gonna do the eyes with the thicker one. But it's important that your watercolors are completely dry because they can actually ruin your pens. And pens can get expensive, so be ye warned. So all I'm doing is just outlining. I just kind of hold it up so that I can see what I'm doing. But adding this extra black line and then outlining the little white of the eye, it just makes it pop. 
and you definitely want to leave like we mentioned earlier some whites around the eye all right i'm going to remove my clip and what i'm going to do with my pigma it's very thin i'm just going to start making wispy little lines outlining what i've already painted and i think that this lighter line works for the delicateness of our bunny and when you make them wispy like this it kind of adds to that fur effect that we're going for and you can probably see there's still some of my sketch around the edges and I'm going to come back in at the very end when everything is really dry with my kneaded eraser and erase those lines. Right here around the bottom of the chin. Still using those furry strokes that I'm just drawing in. I'm making these come to the right and these will go to the left and meet somewhere in between. I just made my mouth and nose a little longer than I had drawn it because I see my lines underneath. Outlining the nose. Now, you can leave it just like this or you can come in and outline your flowers too. I am going to do my leaves. And I'm gonna add the vein work down the center. I'm not going to Add a lot of detail. But I think I'm going to call it done. It might help to add a little bit more line right down here just to distinguish. I'll pull you back out so you can see the entire thing. I almost forgot that we want to come in here and give our little bunny some whiskers and maybe some little eyelashes. You can't really see them, but they are there and now we're done. And this is just a cute little springtime bunny to celebrate May Day.